Hello and welcome to a Monkey Logic design tutorial. I'm Michael, and today I'm going to show you how to format scrollable text in Adobe Captivate. I use scrollable text for adding per slide transcripts on any Captivate slide that has audio narration, so the person viewing the presentation can read what is being said to them. Let's get started by first looking at what we're going to create. The published project you see on screen has two scrolling text boxes. The standard method of adding a scrolling text box is to use Captivate's scrolling text widget, which is on the left. You can see that all the text is plain and doesn't have any formatting. To create the bulleted list, I had to manually create the bullets using ANSI text. The downside of this method, as you can see here, is that you don't get any hanging indents like a real bulleted list would have. On the right is another scrolling text box, but you can see that I formatted the text with color, bolding, and a bulleted list which always uses hanging indents. This is possible by using Captivate's web object instead of the scrolling text widget. The web object is generally used to point to another web page, or, as I'm doing here, you can embed HTML and CSS code to display scrollable formatted text. For this tutorial, in addition to Captivate, I'm also going to use Dreamweaver to create my HTML and CSS. Knowing how to code HTML and CSS would be very beneficial, but if you don't know how to code it, then a WYSIWYG HTML editor like Dreamweaver would be very helpful. After I create my code, I'll be copying and pasting it into the website textfixer.com, which is going to minify the code, which means it removes all the line breaks, tab spaces, and any double spaces from the code, and makes it all one long line. Minifying the code is essential because of how Captivate's web object functions. Let's jump into Captivate and add a web object by selecting Objects, Web, and click on the Embed Code Radio button. Now we need some code to embed, so I'm going to jump over to Dreamweaver to an empty HTML file I've already created. Depending on how you have Dreamweaver set up, your view may be different than mine. I'm using the split view with code on the left and design on the right. The first thing I'm going to add is a div tag, which is going to contain all the text. Assign it an ID of scrolling text and add the closing div tag. I have the text I'm going to add already created in a plain text file, so I'm going to open Notepad++, select all the text, copy it, go back into Dreamweaver, and paste it into the design view. I'm going to add some standard HTML tags to the text. The first line is the main heading, so select the top line, and in the Properties palette, selecting Heading 1 from the Format dropdown. The next line is just paragraph text, but the following six lines are going to be a bulleted list. So I'm selecting all of those six lines, and pressing the Unordered List option in the Properties palette. I also want to style all the text using CSS, so I need to define the CSS in the file by going to the CSS Designer palette, press the plus symbol, and select Define in Page. And this adds the CSS area to the top of the HTML code. I'm going to set all my text to the same font and size, so I'll create a selector for this scrolling text ID, add a font family declaration for the Gotham family, add a font size declaration, and set that to 14 pixels, and pressing F5 refreshes the preview. You can see that all the text has the correct font family, but everything except for the H1 header text changed size. This is because the H1 tag has its own size formatting that's automatically added by browsers. So I'll change this behavior by setting the selector to target both the scrolling text and the H1 tag. Setting my cursor after the scrolling text selector, add a comma, space, H1, and press F5 to refresh the preview. All the text is now the same size. I also want to add color to anything using an H1 tag. So I'll create a new H1 selector just for this purpose. Add the color declaration. Select the Monkey Logic CC library. Select Monkey Logic Dark. And press F5 to refresh the preview. Now the H1 text has the color I specified. I know that there are going to be a few additional things I want to modify using CSS. But for now I'll show you how this currently looks in the web widget. Select all the code in the code view. Copy it. Go to the textfixer.com website, paste the text, select Compress HTML, and you can see that all the HTML is reformatted into a single continuous line. Select the Copy to Clipboard button, go back to Captivate, and paste the code into the Embed Code field. Now I'll preview the file by selecting Preview, HTML5 in Browser. 
This looks good so far, but there are still a few things I want to adjust. The Captivate web widget adds 25 pixels of padding at the top, which is why there is a large space between the first line and the border of the widget. So I want to reduce that space, add some padding to the right side of the text so it won't touch the scroll bar, and decrease the padding on the left side of the bullet so they're closer to the left side of the widget. First I'll eliminate the space at the top of the widget by adding a new selector just for the scrolling text div with a margin top declaration set to negative 25 pixels. By setting it to a negative number, the top of the div will be moved up which overcomes the 25 pixel padding added by the widget. To add the padding to the right side of the text, I'll add another declaration of padding right and set that to 5 pixels. And to move the bullets to the left, I'll add a new unordered list selector with a margin left declaration set to negative 15 pixels. So now I'll go through the process again of minifying the code by copying it, going back to textfixer.com, clicking reset, paste, compress HTML, copy to clipboard button, then go back to Captivate, select everything in the embed code field, press delete to remove that code, paste in my copied text, and let's preview the results. This is perfect for the formatting, but let's take a few final steps to get it ready for use as a per slide transcript of a slide's audio. First, I'm going to uncheck the border option. And so the scrolling text isn't just floating, I'll add a custom border graphic I have in the library. Send it to the back. Position it on the right side of the slide and then move the web object over the background image. Because this is going to be a transcript that can be opened and closed as desired, I need a button to open the transcript and another to close it. I'll add that by selecting Interactions, Button. I'll duplicate this button by pressing Ctrl D on my keyboard. Move the duplicate over the little tiny tab at the bottom. Change it from a text button to a transparent button. Change the caption to the letter X. Select a style I already have set up called Close Transcript. And resize it so it's covering the tab. The style I created sets the fill opacity for all the object states to 0%, and the text color for the normal state to red, the text color to a dark red for the rollover state, and black for the down state. We also need to prevent the button from pausing the project, so we'll go to the Timing tab and uncheck the Pause After option. Now I'll select all three of these objects, press Ctrl G to group them together, change the name of the group to Transcript 01, change the visibility of the group to Not Visible in Output, select just the Close button, go to the Actions tab, change its on success to hide, the hide to transcript 01, and uncheck continue playing the project. By unchecking this option, closing the transcript won't start playing the project if we were paused at the end of a slide. Finally, I'll click on the original button I created, set the on success to show, the show to transcript 01, also unchecking the continue playing the project option, Go to the Timing tab so we can uncheck the Pause After option since we don't want this button to pause the project either. Go to the Styles tab, set the caption to Show Transcript, and resize the button so we can see all the text. Let's preview the project and see how this looks. Clicking the Show Transcript button shows the transcript. You can scroll the text, and clicking the Close button hides the transcript. And that is how to create formatted scrollable text in Adobe Captivate. I'm Michael, and until next time, keep looking for ways to take your creativity further.